In chapter three, first section, we're going to talk about describing relationship between two variables. So why do we study the relationship between two variables? Well, we want to make predictions, explain phenomena, see if there's a relationship between two things. A response variable measures the outcome of a study. The explanatory variable helps explain or predict the changes in the response variable. So in algebra, you learned about independent and dependent variables. It's the same thing, they just have different names and stats. Independent variable is your explanatory and your dependent variable is your response. So for example, if I'm looking at how a drug treats an illness, the explanatory variable is the drug. The response variable is the time it takes to recover from the illness given so much of the drug. The only option for displaying a relationship between two quantitative variables is a scatter plot, and they're fairly easy to construct. Now, how do you know which variable to put on which axis? Well, the x-axis will have the explanatory variable. The y-axis will have the response variable. I remember this because x-axis has goes with explanatory. Um, and when you build your axis, you don't have to start at 0, 0. Um, in fact, I encourage you to look at your smallest value for your explanatory and your highest value, and that can help you judge your scale. Same thing with response variable. X and Y axis do not have to have the same scale. In fact, usually they don't. But you have to label. The easiest way to lose points when you make a scatter plot is don't label both axes. It's that simple. All right, track and field day. The table below shows the data for 12 students in a statistics class. Each member of the class ran a 40-yard sprint and then did a long jump with their running start. Make a scatter plot of the relationship between sprint time in seconds and long jump in distance. All right, so I'm going to make my scatter plot, and I know my explanatory variable is sprint time, and my response variable is the long jump distance. Now, before I draw my graph, I want to kind of look at my data. What's the smallest sprint time? What's the highest sprint time? Thankfully, these look like pretty easy to gauge. So my smallest sprint time is 5.05 seconds, and my highest is... 7.25. That helps me scale my x-axis. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the long jump distance to help me scale my y-axis. Notice I don't start at 0, 0. So I just drew my axes and I plotted the points. So recognize that each of these is an x-y coordinate basically. So each of these represents a point on the scatter plot. So where the sprint time is 5.41, the long, just, long jump distance is 171. So that's the start right there. Now, and then I went through and plotted those points, and you can see the shape it's forming. So what four characteristics should you consider when you interpret a scatter plot? There are four, obviously. Uh, the first one is the direction. Is it positive, negative, or neither? Now, direction, think of it like slope. Is it a positive slope, negative slope, or zero slope? Second is form. Is the shape linear or nonlinear? Is there a curve in it, or is it a straight line? Really, that's all you have to decide at this stage. Next, the strength. Is the association strong or weak? Is it moderately strong or very strong? Moderately weak, very weak? Explain the strength of the relationship. And then lastly, outliers. You could also call this unusual features. Do any points seem to fall out of the overall pattern? So kind of like we did in chapter one when we described distributions, we used socks. But in this chapter, we use dots, direction, outliers, form, and strength. You do not have to use all, you don't have to use them in this order, but you do need to make sure you've addressed all of them, um, specifically if there are outliers. If there's no outliers, then just say no apparent outliers. The other thing I would add is that you have to make sure you put it in context. So looking at my scatter plot about the sprint time and long jump distance, here's what how my answer would look using dots. Students who take longer to run 40 yards seem to have a shorter jump, indicates a negative direction. The pattern seems to be linear and moderate in strength. It does not appear to have any outliers. So I've covered direction, I've covered form, strength, and outliers in just a couple sentences. Um, now notice when I, I didn't just say it's a negative association and stop there, I included the context. What is this graph telling me? It's not just a negative association. It tells me that the longer the sprint time, it appears the jump is shorter. OK, 
Okay, so wrap it in context to be complete. All right, the following scatter plot shows the amount of sodium in milligrams and the amount of fat in grams in salads from McDonald's with no dressing. Describe the relationship between sodium and fat. So here's how I would use DOFs. You might want to pause it and think through it, but here's how I would do it. I would say there's a positive association between the milligrams of sodium and fat grams. The more sodium a salad has, the more fat it tends to have as well. The graph appears to have clusters. Each cluster is strongly linear, but overall the pattern is nonlinear. The form is strong as each point falls within one of the clusters, and there do not appear to be any outliers. Now, clusters is a unique thing about this graph, so I wanted to make sure to mention the clusters. You don't always have them, so don't look for them all the time. But this one appears to have clusters, and the clusters themselves are linear, but if you overall, with a big magic marker, connect the dots, you have a curved shape, so that's why I called it nonlinear. So I wanted to show you just real quick how to do a scatter plot in your calculator. Um, it's not difficult, but let me just tell you this. If you do this on an AP test and you copy the scatter plot from your calculator, that's fine, but if you don't label your axis, you're going to have a problem. Um, you have to make sure you label and scale both axes. Now, in your calculator, here are your steps. I'm just going to visually walk you through the screens, but the steps are right here in your notes. So first of all, you have to put the data in list 1 and 2. List 1 is explanatory, 2 is response. Then I go to stat plots, which is just y or second y equals. Open up the stat plot menu. Choose the first plot. You got to make sure to turn it on when you get in there. Then here's the different displays we've talked about, but we want the scatter plots, that very first one. So you want to um, click on that. Check that list one has your explanatory, list two has your response. And then you go to the graph screen. If this doesn't show up, then you would hit zoom 9 to adjust the window, and there is my scatter plot. Now again, I can't just copy it like this on my paper. I have to label and scale my axes according to the data. 